All right, it's 12.02, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Carissa Chuka with Results Repeat. Thanks for joining us for our Lunch and Learn today um, to talk about why your ads aren't converting. Um, today, our Director of SEO and Certified Conversion Rate Specialist, David Tischler, is going to walk you through a presentation and hopefully you will walk away with um, some actionable items that you can implement on your site um, to help your ads convert better. Um, we'll be sending around a recording of the webinar to everyone who registered, so don't worry about taking notes. Feel free to just sit back, enjoy your lunch, and enjoy the presentation. We'll also be posting it on our YouTube page if you want to look for it there. We're also going to host a Q&A at the end of the presentation, so pop your questions into the chat box, and I will um, share them with David at the end of the presentation. With all that said, here is David. Okay, thank you everybody for joining. And um, I appreciate you coming in. Today, we're gonna to talk about why your ads aren't converting. Um, as Carissa mentioned, I'm the director of SEO here at Results Repeat. I also am a certified conversion rate specialist or CRO, CRO specialist. Um, so concentration on helping you guys get ads that are gonna convert and landing pages that are gonna convert. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, one of the first things that we hear from, from prospects and, and from new clients uh, is some variation of, of this. You know, My ads have a great click-through rate and I've got high quality score, but, but nobody is buying. Or why doesn't pay-per-click work for me or I'm spending a ton, but the return is, is terrible. Um, people are clicking, but they're not buying or something like my market is too niche. So this and many others are a lot of things we hear. And um, basically what it comes down to is the chances are is that your landing page is, is the issue. Um, if people are clicking through your ads and you've got a good CTR rate, um, or a click-through rate rather, then you're okay on the ad front. And, and we're gonna take a deeper look into that. So the landing page by definition is any page on your website that's accessed when people either click on the ad or click on a hyperlink from another ad. Um, and those tend to be the biggest problem here. So let's talk a little bit about what the most common landing page issues that we see are. Uh, the first one, branding and messaging are, are inconsistent. So people may see a headline or if you're using a display campaign, a particular image in your ad, and then they click on it, they get to the web page or the landing page, and they don't realize they're in the right place because maybe the coloring is different or the branding is different or it doesn't have your logo or the headline is a little bit um, off. So that, that's issue number one. Issue number two here is um, simply not optimizing your landing page for conversions. And we're gonna get into a, a, a few examples and explanations of that in the next couple of slides. Another big one is just using generic headlines. Um, things that are so basic that they don't really make you distinct from, from the crowd. Okay. Um, big issue is slow load time. And, and this isn't just on landing pages or website in general um, with core vitals rolling out um, from Google <laughs> this month. That is something that we definitely have to take into consideration. Another is a landing page that has no calls to action. We really need to ask people to take the action that we want them to take. Um, the next thing here, we wanna use images that are consistent with your goals for the page. So if you're using like basic stock images that you see on multiple websites, or it doesn't really have much to do with your, um, ad or your the topic that you're trying to get across, or if um, the lines of sight and things like that on the image aren't proper. And again, we're gonna get into examples of that, that can be an issue. Um, 
a poorly structured landing page uh, basically fails to highlight the benefits to the client in a way that'll get them excited and get them ready to, to convert. And then the other big thing, and there are more than this, but the other big thing we see is too much text uh, on the page for the landing page. So let's jump in and do a teardown here. Um, so what we're seeing in this screen, and this is not one of our clients, but we've got permission to use this. So these are ads, Google search ads that are actually pretty good. They've got good click-through rates. They've got uh, decent impressions. So you're getting good, um, you're getting people to click through and, and get to the page. But on this particular um, uh, website, people aren't converting. So, you know, one of the things I want you to note here is take a look at these headlines and take a look at, they all have calls to action and things like that. So the, the ads are consistent. But let's talk about the web page a little bit. Um, and, and there's lots of things on this page. We're gonna take them one by one. Okay. First thing we're gonna look at, I spoke about generic headlines. So reliable and fast delivery to the United States. This doesn't talk about wholesale electronics or bulk delivery of electronics or electronics from China or anything that, that you saw in the ads or what they do. So, you know, am I in the right place? Is this really the ad I clicked on? What are we talking about here? Uh, so that, that's issue number one here. The next thing we see is this generic image of a shipping uh, a cargo ship and but but one of the issues here two issues one is it's generic you can see this on dozens of sites um and it's it, it's just a bot and paid for stock image the second is the line of sight is pointing off the page and away from where you want your clients to go this is a big deal your images although subconsciously they draw the eye and they get people looking in a certain direction. What you want is to look towards a call to action or towards what you want the client, the prospect to do next. Okay. Right. Next issue we have on this particular page, there's no call to action. So here we've got a range of prices, but it's not in a button. There's no uh, button next to it that says buy now, add to cart, get started, shop now, any of those would be good. Um, and you want them distinct and to show up on each of these boxes. And then one of the last things we see, oh, I'm sorry, not one of the last things we see here, but the next thing is, if you remember in my uh, initial opening, we talked about highlighting the benefits in a way uh, to get people excited. Well, this is hidden at the top in small text, minimum, order quantity five units. Okay, so low minimum order, among other things, fast and reliable delivery. These are all things that should be highlighted potentially in bullet points or, or something along those lines. You wanna make sure any benefits, any reason for people to buy is clear and easy to read. All right. And the next thing we see here is this is a limited description. And I know on, on some, um, shopping carts or content management systems that you are limited in space. But one of the things we see here is this cuts off the sentence in, you know, basically in the middle of the sentence. It doesn't tell you what the rest of the description is. So one of the things you can do here is if you know you have a limited amount of space here, you want to carefully craft those sentences to be complete and really explain what you've got going on. So that's the teardown of that page. Let's take a look at um, one that does really well. And I'm sure all of you recognize this, uh, Amazon Business. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about those calls to action, right? We have the join now button here, clear thousands of products. It's got um, an incentive, Prime Day is coming up, shop early to get deals create your free account. And then down here, it highlights all the benefits, right? Streamline purchasing, get quantity discounts, choose your options. 
So it's really inspiring people to go through and think, and, and you can rest assured that Amazon has spent lots of time and lots of money um, researching the types of landing pages that work really well. All right. Um, so what I really like to do when I'm doing these is use examples. Um, so the next few examples we're gonna take a look at here are ways not to do it, essentially. Um, so you'll probably recognize Chase Bank. A couple of things that they've got going on here. So one first question that pops into my mind is what is the purpose of this page? Um, so clearly they're looking to get people to sign up for a credit card. Um, big mistake they make here though, they use up all of this real estate on the right-hand side, which is prime real estate for a login for existing customers. You're spending time and money on an ad to present it and you already have existing customers. This one's supposed to generate new customers. So this is prime real estate. If, if they were to move this over to the right-hand side, um, maybe give it a little more space or maybe give some highlights in there, that would be a much better example. So, so don't um, lose focus of the purpose of the page. Really, really important thing to remember there. All right, here's another example. And this, this is actually from Lowe's. Uh, and, and so big home building company. The problem with this page is they're actually really trying to do too much here. So you see, we've got 15% off for windows and doors or special order tile or 10% off hybrid water heaters. Each of these should have their own specific landing page that should be targeted for that one ad and expanded to highlight the benefits and add calls to action. So this is an example of a little bit too cluttered. Okay, um, here's another one, another big company, SAP, right? So they're talking about revolutionize your marketing for a new breed of customer. And then they go really old school on this. Way too much text. It looks like a blog. There's not really, I mean, yeah, it's asking you to watch the video, but there's not a big call to action. This just looks like you would see a blog there with no images. Um, and you have the contact us, but it doesn't ask you to take a specific action here. All right, so those are a couple of ways not to do it. Let's let's um, jump up here and take a look at some really good ones. All right, so this is an excellent example. It's clean. It asks for a particular action. It is got images that are relevant to the product because we're talking about floral arrangements and the sight lines have the eye drawing not only through what the uh, primary benefit here starting at $75, but also up to the form and the action they wanna take. So you've got these sight lines drawing them over. It's simple, it's not over cluttered, it's easy to read uh, and you've got what you need on there. One thing they do on here that I don't love is using the word submit instead of get started or, or you know, um, get going. It's really popular and you see that all the time. Um, there's a debate between some psychologists that say, you know, people doesn't like, people don't like to submit. So maybe that's not the best choice of language, but it does work. It does convert. All right. Another really good one here, uh, DoorDash. The benefits are very simple, right? It's your time, it's your goals, you're the boss. We want you, you can stop and start when you want. Here's an image of potentially how much money you can make. Simplest form possible, right? Just put your email address in, that's the next step. It's not asking for too many fields, it's not asking for address, phone number, too much information. It has a little bit of explanation at the bottom of what that is. And for people who are already in the process, it has a direction for them to go. But the clear direction here is put your email in, click the button. This is a, a really good landing page. Um, another example, clean and simple, right? For litmus, and this is for a sign up for their newsletter. 
not a lot of explanation about what you'll do or what you'll get, but let's stay in touch. If you want all the latest content um, for marketing pros, we'll send it to you. Just put your email in. And again, single line of input here and then subscribe. Perfect. Uh, and then they do note here, they'll never share your email address and you can opt out at any time. So it's overcoming objection right in the ad. Very simple, very clean. All right. Um, another great way to go is really showing people using the product um, and images. And, and you can see this is done in a very simple way, right? You've got images of two people using various screens of this product. You've got a call to action that says, go ahead and watch the video to see more or sign up and get this calendar, get it. Um, simple, easy to go. There's no confusion about what they need to do. This will convert well, right? Similar to the DoorDash, right? Here, here we go for Lyft. Again, it has the benefit clearly highlighted, make up to $35 an hour driving your car. Here's the info we need to get going. And what's really nice here is they have a little widget that says, okay, I can work 22 hours a week and I'm in Seattle. Let me calculate about how much money I can make. Is it worth it for me to do this? So they give you the tool that you need to get the information and then simple call, become a driver. Uh, ResPage. So ResPage is a marketing company that does, um, that's in a very particular niche for multifamily apartment rentals. And they, what we've done here is just create a, a bunch of benefits in a form of a checklist for the two different uh, basic funnels that they have all the information you need, call to action, and a highlight of what they're doing. Uh, very simple page, again, gets really good conversions. Um, and then another one, this is ours, just highlighting a, um, a the line of sight we talked about issues. Um, so you can see we've got, we get revenue where results mean revenue, we generate more business for you, and then we've got this line pointing right up to the get started. Really clean, really easy. Here's a benefit. Here's what you have to do next. Okay. So just um, some takeaways here. Five things you can remember on these landing pages and important things to go through. Uh, so first, really important to know who you're speaking to, right? And this is true of any web page, any ad, anything you're doing. Understand who they are, who are you speaking to, what's going to motivate them to take the desired action, and then build your page around that. Well, the next thing that we want to talk about is ensuring that your messaging, your colors, your branding, your headlines are consistent across not just your, your website, but across your ads too. So if you're using a display ad and you've got a picture and it's got oranges and blues, you wanna make sure that your landing page is built out in oranges and blues. Or if you have a particular headline that that is also on the landing page so people realize they're in the right place and they know what to do next. Highlight the benefits in a really clear way, whether it's bullet points or a single sentence or, or something that they know, what am I gonna get by taking this action? Ask to take action. I've seen uh, a lot of sites where it goes to a category page, very similar to that first case study that we looked at here with the electronics. It wasn't asking them to do anything. It said, hey, fast and reliable delivery. And it got a page with a box with a whole bunch of products on it, but doesn't say, what should you do next? So if you want somebody to fill out a form or you want somebody to buy something, don't be afraid to ask for it. And the last thing to remember, more doesn't always mean better. 
Don't try to squeeze stuff in there. Don't try to do multiple campaigns on a single landing page. Um, take the time, build out the extra landing page, make sure it's tailored to the information in the specific campaign and don't over clutter it with text or, or too much information. Too much information is something that keeps people from buying or makes them bounce off the site. So I know this was quick. This is a lunchtime kind of thing going on, but we will um, take some time and do some Q and A here. Awesome. Thanks, David. This is awesome. We have a few questions. So first of all, um, speak to landing pages in regards to mobile versus desktop from a CRO um, perspective, if you don't mind. Okay. So great, great point. So on the desktop, you can see you've got the broader area. You've got a lot more to do it. Really important to have responsive design and to have those um, calls to action and the benefit highlights really stand out. So on mobile, people aren't afraid to scroll. They'll scroll down, but the button still has to be kind of prominent. That call to action still has to be prominent. And you, you still have to get those things in there. Now, we talked about keeping a really clean page, keeping things simple, not cluttered. That works incredibly well for modal, mobile and, and responsive design. Awesome. Okay, so what best practices can you recommend for the amount of calls to action that should be included on a landing page? I know you talked about keeping things really simple, but is there sort of a best practice around the number of CTAs on a? Yeah, so, so the rule I like to go by is there should always be one clear call to action within your visual range. So if you have a page that scrolls a little bit and the call to action goes away, there should be a second call to action within site. So there should always be one CTA within visual range of the visitor. All right, that makes sense. Um, you talked a bit about good versus bad messaging and calls to action. Are there some basic CTAs that you found to work better than others when looking to generate a lead from a form? Um, get started is a really good one. Contact us is one that tends to work really well. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the statistics off the top of my head for this stuff, but those do really well. There's a debate on the submit button. It tends to work well. A lot of people use it, but there, there is a, a argument, so to speak, or, or a, a just kind of between professionals where they say, well, people don't like to submit to anything. Why would you ask them to do that? And when I heard that, I'm like, you know what? That kind of makes sense. Um, I have to dig in and, and see a little more research on that, but I would stay away from that or I would stay away from, you know, things that are pretty generic. But contact us, buy now, get started, shop. Those are all really good ones. All right. We have another question. This kind of um, tiptoes over into the ads territory and maybe this will be the subject of our next webinar, um, but for you today, David, what steps do you recommend taking to improve your click-through rate on your ads? So again, that's probably um, another webinar where you could do a whole lot for that, but you wanna have clear benefits within the headlines. You wanna have a description that inspires people to take the action you want, and you wanna speak to their pain points. In it as clear. Now you're limited in space on what you can do, particularly on search ads. Um, and you want to really just highlight the benefits. So if we if we look at the example that um, I showed earlier, and forgive me for scrolling through all of these, but I'm gonna kind of head back to the top. All right, so you can see here, like, so it talks about the topic bulk wholesale electronics. It talks about here's a wholesale supplier, explore today. And then it talks about other keywords that you've got in there. You've got the bulk cheap electronics, fast delivery, no hidden fees. So it's talking about all these benefits fit into this 
small little sentence, and it has a call to action. Those are really good uh, ways to do that. Another trick a good friend of mine showed me is as you're doing this display URL, you can put things like shop now, order now, explore now into those ads. Um, but those aren't the actual URL it goes to, but there's a call to action in there that stands out. So those are good ways to do that. Also, it's gonna depend on the quality of information on your landing page uh, and other things like that. Now, there's a few people in our pay-per-click department that I think can speak a lot more to that. That's potentially another topic. We could probably do a whole webinar on that. Nice. Um, but as basic as you can go, that, that's a good way to think about it. So David, um, real quick, we have, I know we have a lot of marketing professionals on the call, um, both from our team and other um, outside, com outside companies. Uh, just in the last couple minutes that we have, could you share with us any additional resources where we might, you know, if we're interested in this, we could learn a little bit more um, and maybe even a little bit about the training that you underwent to become a conversion rate specialist in case yeah. anyone's interested. Um, so I, I have taken a, a course from, um, a company called CXL that offers this like mini degree and certification in this. And they've got some of the world's top experts teaching it. Um, it's literally 130 or 140 hours of this full course. And it really speaks to different elements of it. So when you talk about conversion, it looks at understanding your audience. It looks at um, the psychology of people's buying, emotional triggers, um, layouts of page, colors, all, all different aspects of it. And there's lots more. How to present content, um, what content you should be using, how to overcome objections. So we, we literally spent hundreds of hours going over all the aspects of this and getting an understanding of it. I mean, there's a lot of psychology that goes into this, a lot of triggers. Um, what it really talks to is like the reptilian brain or, or um, and, and emotional triggers in regards to ads and getting people to convert. Cool brings a whole new side to our work. So it's really interesting to me and I'm sure to everyone who is here. Yeah, it's one of those things, that's kind of what got me into it in the first place is really kind of like, how do you understand your audience and how do you know what they're gonna do next? Well, you study it and, and you learn it and, and you become an expert and you use a variety of different techniques depending on, on the needs of the client. Awesome. Well, thank you, David, and thank you to everyone who attended and um, to everyone who asked a question today. I really appreciate it. This was really wonderful and look for the recording soon and come along for our next Lunch and Learn next month. Thank you. See you later. Thanks, everyone.